Welcome back across Nevada to Face to Face. Earlier in the program, I told you about that new ethics complaint against Senator John Ensign. Earlier today, I spoke with Melanie Sloan from Crew, the group that filed the complaint. Melanie Sloan from Crew, thanks for joining us. You could have almost a full-time job uh, filing complaints against John Ensign. The crew has been on this from the beginning since the allegations about severance and other kinds of things with John Ensign. Now what you're essentially alleging in your latest complaint is that John Ensign and the other denizens of C Street got preferential treatment, treatment no one else except maybe members of Congress or the U.S. Senate could have gotten, right? That's right. These members of Congress were invited to live at the C Street house, and then they paid a vastly reduced rent of about $950 a month, and they got, in addition to lodging, housekeeping services, and uh, apparently some of them may have gotten meals as well. Yeah, indeed, some clergymen have raised this issue about this, and the C Street claimed to be a church for a while, at least, and they did a survey of, of surrounding properties, and they found you could get a, essentially a one-bedroom, maybe even a studio apartment for $1,700. That's quite a deal these uh, folks got there on C Street, huh? Right, and it's even better than that because if you stayed at a hotel where, for example, you might have housekeeping services as well, at a minimum in the Capitol Hill area, that would have cost you $2,400 a month and more likely $4,000 a month. Corporate housing for furnished rooms goes for about $4,000 a month as well. So here these guys were getting a, a terrific deal, and they were clearly getting it because they were members of Congress. This isn't just a boarding house like some members have claimed. You have to be specifically invited to live there. And, by the way, it's a very cushy house at that. It's worth $1.8 million. Yes, it's a very nice place to see street residents. A lot has been done on it. Let me show you what you said. Uh, and you, you always take, you folks at Crew always take the most cynical view of these things. Let me show you what you said in a press release. Rarely does someone, particularly a member of Congress, receive something for nothing. So you can't help but wonder exactly what these members may be doing in return for all this largesse. Of course, this is the reason the gift ban was enacted in the first place. This situation cries out for an immediate ethics inquiry. So what could they possibly have been looking for, the people who gave the, this, this uh, tax break, this lodging break to these folks? What's the exchange? What's the quid pro quo? Well, the C Street House is owned by something called the C Street Center, Inc., which has a relationship with the Fellowship, also known as the Family, which is a very shadowy and secretive religious organization that prides itself on its very strong relationship with members of Congress, particularly evangelical members of Congress, who then do the family's bidding. Uh, in previous years, uh, James Inhofe, a senator from Oklahoma, admitted that when he went to Africa on taxpayer dime, he would proselytize on behalf of the family. The family also asks members to meet with other foreign leaders. So in effect, they set up a shadow State Department uh, going outside the realm of the State Department to arrange meetings with foreign leaders, all which works to the benefit of the family to make the family seem that much more powerful. Indeed, we've had Jeff Charlotte on this program who, as you know, wrote that book about the family and did all that investigative journalism on it. And of course, this is the place where that famous meeting took place with uh, Oklahoma Senator Tom Coburn and Doug Hampton and John Ensign, where supposedly Coburn acted as an intermediary. A lot has gone on in this house, and you used the right word, I think, shadowy. But indeed, they had a tax exemption for a while, and as I understand it, uh, that was partially revoked last year, right? Yes, that was revoked by the D.C. government, uh, the tax exemption, and now the House has to pay taxes. Uh, the, uh, there's still a question about whether it has uh, charitable tax status with the IRS, which is why this group of pastors has gone ahead and filed complaints with the Internal Revenue Service asking that their tax status be revoked. And we are very troubled by that as well at CREW, but our complaint today is really about the issue of whether members of Congress were improperly accepting gifts. And the gift rule is very clear. Lodging can be a gift in both the House and the Senate. And when you take lodging that is below market value, you are, in fact, taking a gift. And uh, that's not allowed under House and Senate rules. And even if you were going to accept it, then you'd have to declare it on your financial disclosure forms. And clearly members of Congress haven't done that here because they just argue it wasn't a gift. Yeah, indeed, uh, from what I understand of the law, and you're, you're the lawyer, you can explain this to me, there are essentially only two ways you can get out of this. One is if there's a personal friendship involved, and the other is if it's owned by a person and there's a so-called hospitality exemption. But as you mentioned, it's owned by a corporation, so neither of those exemptions apply, correct? 
Absolutely. It's perfectly clear that an entity can't offer personal friendship uh, and can't offer personal hospitality. The building would have to be owned by an individual, and it's not. It's owned by a corporation, the C Street Center Incorporated. And in any event, there would still be the problem of uh, members of Congress are not allowed to accept something that's offered to them because of their official positions. And here we have a case where only of members of Congress can live at the House. So clearly, it's because of their official position that they're allowed to live at the House and get these benefits of this fantastic rent for beautiful rooms in a close-in building, as well as housekeeping service and meals. And we should mention that John Ensign, we believe, has moved out of the C Street House, although his office is uh, consistently said we're not going to discuss his living arrangements. So let me go through the whole picture here, though. You've been watching this very closely. You're a former uh, prosecutor yourself, I believe. Uh, the DOJ is looking in, into, into John Ensign. The Senate Ethics Committee has already been looking into John Ensign. Are you disturbed by the pace of these investigations? Do you think they're picking up? What's your sense of all of this as a former prosecutor? Well, my sense is that the Justice Department investigation finally has been picking up. We've been reading leaks that there have been subpoenas issued and, and people have spoken with the FBI. So finally, it seems like we're making some traction there. And, you know, I think it was a pretty slow start. It took a long time for the FBI to get on this. The Senate Ethics Committee, I'm not surprised by how slow they've been. Routinely, they would defer all uh, investigations in these matters whenever the Justice Department is looking into something. It's kind of an unusual situation that they're looking into something at the same same time the Justice Department is, uh, but we'll see what happens there. It seems impossible to imagine that John Ensign can escape repercussions for all of his misconduct. There's just so many elements to that. Indeed, we had a former federal prosecutor on this program recently, a very well-respected guy here in town, and he said he believed that they already have enough to indict John Ensign. You think he's right? Oh, I completely think he's right. You have to remember, there's another member of Congress, former member of Congress, Bob Ney from Ohio, who eventually pleaded guilty to conspiracy to assist his former chief of staff violate the lobbying ban. So there's recent history for this. Uh, and the emails that we've seen Doug Hampton release and the... Uh, the stories that the New York, Times has had, ha, New York Times has had indicating all the people who have spoken about uh, John Ensign's contact with other corporations and other people in order to help Doug Hampton, Hampton start his lobbying business. It's very clear he violated the lobbying ban. I also think the evidence is very clear that he <clears throat> failed to report the $96,000 payment to Cynthia Hampton uh, on the uh, FEC forms as required. That $96,000 he's described as a gift was clearly a severance payment, and we've seen evidence of that in Doug Hampton's contemporaneous notes from the time, and that too is a felony offense. Should he resign, do you think? I absolutely think he should resign. There's no way Mr. Ensign isn't far more focused on his legal problems than the problems of the people of Nevada. All right, Melanie Sloan, it's a pleasure to have you back on the program. Thanks for coming on.